Sup, it's Allie. Welcome back to Branching Paths. When we last left off, Randy had carried Sam to the nurse's office after she collapsed. And, uh, if I sound awful, it's because I feel awful. I came down with something the other day, and, uh, this small nose is all stuffed up. My head's been throbbing all day. But we gotta keep up with the recordings, so we'll do our best. Randy walks out of the office and sits down on the nearest bench, physically and mentally drained from the whole ordeal. What a day this turned out to be, he sighs to himself. In a weird way, it felt good to do that. I don't know. Whenever we had to deal with people that caused us problems, I never ended up feeling quite so good about what we did after all the action. Sure, in the moment, things felt good, but afterwards... I don't know. It just felt like I had this hollow feeling inside once the rush wore off. I was always brushing it off until now. Randy, re er, Randy <laughs> recalls back to what Sam had said to him. I know you're not going to sell out Kai because you're too loyal or you fear what would happen if you do. Typically, athletes have some sort of personal code. You're into sports, surely you have some model or something to live by. What would your other friends, your teammates, your coach, your family think if they knew the truth? Do you really trust and agree with Kai on everything? Do you even have a conscience? Or did you ring over it when you killed Kai hang those pictures? Do you think that every single person that Kai has ruined deserved it? Will you ever run out? Of enemies? Or when you finally reach your goal, what will Kai do for you next? Sam's words echo inside of him as he wrestles with her questions. You know, it wasn't that long ago. <laughs> Sam. Sam was right about something. How most athletes live by some sort of code or motto. Even though I never really had an official one per se, I always tried to carry myself with confidence and I never tried to look or tried looking for trouble. I always tried to respect others and tried to mind my own business. But it was Kai who taught me to think about others too, to be more mindful of the world around us. It's in italics. Randy then looks up at the wall. A banner of the school's motto stares back at him. St. Salvato High, always first among equals. Equals. Let me hear you wait. Uh, let me let you in on something, Randy. You may think that if you go through life just sticking to yourself, you'll make it a okay. Right. But it's wrong. What I've learned from my experience, that if you want something, you take it. You won't get very far trying to be passive, because those who are aggressive will see you as an easy target and take advantage of their own, or take advantage of for their own ends. Uh, the world might not owe us anything in particular, but we all live in it. We're all equals. We were all created equally. A lot of people just try to get by with the status quo, while others just think they were born better than others. Uh, but we all came into this world the exact same way. Yeah, you get lucky and are born with some advantages, but it doesn't mean you need to rub it in everyone's faces constantly. Some people, for whatever reason, take it too far. They are driven by greed. It's like a drug for some people. They can never be grateful for what they have. They always have to be have more and try to make everyone else miserable. If you look around this school, it's a prime example of what I'm talking about. The student council, the club presidents, and all their friends try to flex on everyone else that they're important and should listen to them. If they refuse to go along or call them on their ridiculousness, uh, they're either cast out or bullied into submission. And if they accept and go along with it, they become their slaves. Uh, does that seem wrong to you? Yeah, I get what you're saying, but what can we do? They're popular for a reason. Well, I think most of them have some sort of skeleton in their closet that we can exploit for our purposes. We can show these popular kids that they're not nearly as powerful as they think. I think it's time for us to start thinking about others. Think about how we can help them out. They deserve to be treated fairly and not like pawns of the popular kids. We can truly make everyone in this school proper equals. Then perhaps people will start being kind to each other. Was that all just talk? 
What are we even going to do once we finally complete our mission? Once we get the entire student senate and Jeremy under our thumb, what comes next? Aren't we just replacing the power structure with ourselves? Are we going to be the judges of what's fair and who should be treated in what way? Why did I never think about this? I was just going along for the ride with Kai. All the pushing around we did, all the people we've ruined and hurt, what are we building ourselves towards? And he shakes his head as he stands up and heads back to his study hall. The hallways are bustling with activity. Word had quickly spread that the ambulance arrived to whisk someone away. I don't know why they kept the hallways. Yeah, I saw the little thing from Mr. Garrison's room. They rolled someone out on a stretcher. Well, were you able to tell who it was? It looked like a girl, but I couldn't tell you who. Hmm, well, come to think of it, something strange happened in my study hall class. What? Well, Randy Barrett left around 9.30 and didn't come back for like 15 minutes. He looked super out of it. Then the teacher just took him outside in the hallway. Not too long after, I heard someone say that the ambulance had arrived. Well, it wasn't Randy that got carried out, but come to think of it, I saw Sam in my first period class, but I didn't see her come back to my third period that I have with her. Oh no, maybe it was her. Could have been. Adrian and Yuri walk past Jester and Monica. Or Monica. Good to know. I'm okay. So, have you been hearing about what happened? Yeah, can't go five seconds without someone bringing it up. I guess someone had some sort of heart attack or something. I don't know. I'm anxious to know who it was. I hope they're okay. I'm sure they're fine. I keep hearing it was Sam Meadows. No one's seen her since the third period, and she matches the descriptions I heard. I've been hearing that too. I tried texting Sayori, but she hasn't responded back to me yet. Well, I guess it's probably Sam then. Yeah, I hope she's okay. You know, the weird thing I've been hearing that has been that Randy Barrett of all people got her to the nurse's office. Apparently a few people saw him running by with her. Oh, really? That's very noble of him to do to help her in a moment of... Yeah, to help her in her moment of need. Puh. There's nothing noble about Kai's walking tumor. That guy does anything Kai says. Maybe it's not so heartless as you make him out to be. Adrian stops in his tracks and pulls Yuri to the side, talking to Yuri in a heart. Are you for real right now? That dude was helping Kai beat the shit out of Shiro last week. He's either some brainless lapdog or he's just as heartless as his master. Adrian, all I'm saying is that maybe from time to time, those we consider to be evil are capable of an act of kindness. He is human. Just barely. I'm sure he's doing it for show. Besides, who knows what he did to her before. Here he shoots Adrian an irritated look. Why are you always so crass and cynical? I'm being practical. I know how Kai and his slaves operate, Yuri. Whatever act of kindness they do, take it with a grain of salt. There's usually an ulterior motive. Guys like Kai, Randy, and Shiro are cut from the same cloth. They'll act nice to your face, but once your back is turned, they'll plot to use you. Why are you bringing Shiro into this? Just as an example. I don't know why you're being so defensive over him. Fine, whatever. I don't know why we're arguing about this. Babe, I'm just looking out for you. I just don't want you gravitating towards any bad influences. I'm not going to gravitate towards anything. Honestly, I think you're being ridiculous, but whatever. I'm done talking about this. I'll see you later. Yuri frees herself of Adrian's grip as she walks off. Adrian leans back against the wall as he watches Yuri walk towards their class. I will protect you, Yuri. I'll keep you away from all these bad influences so that you won't repeat the same mistakes I've made. I swear it. The school day has come and gone for the students of St. Salvador High. Many of the students have already gone to their clubs or have gone home, while some have chosen to loiter around the school to ponder their thoughts. Yuri enters the school rooftop and finds a seat on a nearby bench, looking out to the city on the horizon. She sets to her, her, yeah, her bag down next to her and takes a deep breath. The cool autumn air soothes her nerves. It was a long day today, she thought to herself. 
to have tests of presentation and overall just another long school day. Then there was Adrian. Yuri sighs to herself as she looks up at the clouds. What has gotten into that boy lately? For whatever reason, he's been more agitated as of late. I find it hard to believe it's just because of Shiro's arrival to the literature club. I can understand why Adrian is skeptical around him, and with his reputation, it is understandable to be averse to him. There has to be something else that's driving him. Maybe something at home with his parents, perhaps. Hold on a second. Did I... Oh, I don't know how this got reset. I wonder why the sound was so quiet. Pick up the speed. Get in. Eh. Yuri shakes her head as she stares up at the clouds wistfully. Oh, sorry. Yuri shakes her head as she stares up at the clouds wistfully. I just hope whatever it is, he calms down soon. I don't want him to have to constantly worry about me. Especially around Shiro. And I don't want to have Shiro worry about being around me. He seems like a respectable person. Even if I haven't known him for very long, he's a far cry from the caricature that everyone paints him out to be. Or it makes him out to be, but okay. On the contrary, he seems like someone I might be able to bond with. Perhaps that opportunity will come soon, when things blow over. As if her thoughts had spoken to some deity, Shiro steps out onto the rooftop. Oh, hey, Yuri. Good afternoon, Shiro. Fancy seeing you up here. I figured the Literature Club would be meeting today. No, actually. Everyone else had plans for today, so we decided to forego the club for today. We'll meet it again tomorrow, though. Uh, gotcha. Well, hey, I might stop by. You're always welcome at the Literature Club, Shiro. Yeah, I know. A moment of silence passes between them, only being briefly interrupted by a gust of wind. Mind if I join you? Uh, Yuri nervously looks off. Man, what's with her? Shiro asked internally. We ended the other day on fine terms, and now she's acting weird again. Maybe it has something to do with Adrian. If it's the old Adrian thing... Oh, man. I couldn't read it fast enough. If it's the old Adrian thing, I get it. I'll... No, it's not. Honestly, it's nothing. You're welcome to join me. Are you sure? Yuri sighs to herself. Yes, though if you'll be uncomfortable in doing so, I won't force you to. Besides, it's not like you have any nefarious intentions. Yeah, I don't. Shiro awkwardly walks up and takes a seat on the bench next to Yuri. They both stare at the clouds in silence for the next few minutes until Yuri turns to Shiro. Shiro, have you ever been in a relationship before? Shiro lets out a surprised laugh. That's a bit of le or out of left field, don't you think? I, I just have something on my mind, that's all. Okay, well, uh, no, I haven't. I've had crushes before, but it never went anywhere serious. Mostly because I shot myself in the foot somehow, but that's a story for another day. Honestly, at this rate, I'd probably have to rent a girlfriend. Sure, let's out a self-deprecating laugh as Yuri stares off silently into space. Shiro clears his throat. Why do you ask? Well, I'm just trying to get a handle on something. Which is? I wasn't truthful when I said I wasn't behaving this way because of Adrian. In fact, he's the primary reason. Jeez, what happened now? Yuri sighs. Well, he's just been on edge lately. Even more so than usual? Yuri shoots Shiro a disapproving look. Her stare is like a dagger piercing into his retinas. And Shiro clears his voice. Ah, sorry. Freudian slip. Right. Anyways, he's just been overly negative and agitated, and I can't say I really know how what's responsible for it. I have a hard time believing it's solely because of you. And Shiro shrugs his shoulders. I know he doesn't like us hanging around each other. Hell, if he saw us now, he'd probably flip out. Yes, he would. I just don't understand why he's suddenly like this. I've never seen him act this way. Telling me to avoid you, and making dismissive comments about people's good deeds. Well, the last part isn't anything particularly new, considering who it was about. Uh, the whole thing with Randy supposedly rushing Sam to the nurse's office? I heard about it. Not sure if I believe it personally, though. 
Tell me that you're not actually sure if it occurred, or at most it will question Randy's motives. Shiro shrugs his shoulders. I definitely don't have the highest opinion of Randy, especially since he's had a big hand in harassing me over the last year. But I don't think he's exactly heartless, not like Kai at least. I don't really know what happened, so... Well, Adrian seems to think that Randy had some ulterior motive for helping Sam. Well, that's his opinion, and I can't say I have a particularly strong one over this myself. Fair, but... I don't know. Adrian just seems to always see the worst in people. No offense, but you're just realizing this now. Adrian's always been a rather judgmental and gloomy person. On the surface, yes, he can be, but when you get to know him, he's actually quite endearing. Well, I'll take your word for it, but I've barely ever seen the guy smile in the five or so years I've known him. If the opportunity ever presented itself, I'd love to show you just how good of a person he can be. But I don't think that will be any time soon. Uh, don't beat yourself up about it. He and I have never spent too much time together, willingly at least. He always tried to keep his distance from me, so I can't say his animosity towards me is all that surprising. I never had anything against him, but I did always get the feeling he was judging me, though he does that with everyone. Hey, so uh, I was always kind of wondering. A girl like you and a guy like Adrian, how do you two end up getting together? Oh, that's quite a tale. Adrian and I had the same literature class in, er, as each other last year. We were on opposite sides of the room across from each other. Uh, from how we were sitting, and if either of us looked straight across, uh, we'd be staring right at each other. I'll admit, around that time, I was reading a lot of literature that had a more gloomy protagonist, and I kind of fell in love with the archetype. Adrian was pretty cute and fit the mold of what I'd consider to be the ideal gloomy boyfriend, if I were to ever have one. So, for a good majority of the last of the year last year, we'd always make eye contact with each other, but neither of us mustered up the courage to walk across the room to talk to the other. Apparently, it was clear to everyone else that we were interested in each other. Towards the end of the year, we, when we got our yearbooks, we were going around having people sign them, and I walked up to Adrian. We made some small, er, small talk, and for whatever reason, I decided to write my number in his yearbook. He ended up calling me that night and asked me out. I said yes, we went out on our first date. We clicked pretty well with each other and the rest is history. Wow, I thought it sounds like something straight out of a visual novel. Huh, it does. Yeah, I'm a huge fan of visual novels. That's very interesting. What kind of genre do you like? I'm more into the emotionally heavy hitting stuff. Do you have any particular favorites? Oh, there's a bunch. First Beat, Katawa Shujo, Clan Ad, If My Heart Had Wings, Tricolor Love Story. There's another one that's on the tip of my tongue. It's about these four girls in a book club, and it's portrayed as a romance game, but it's really a psychological horror story. It messed me up for a few days. But yeah, just to name a few. Interesting. I've heard of a few of those titles. Though I can't say I've really checked out visual novels before. I'm more of a fine brand type of reader. Uh, you should definitely check it out. It's like the story you visualize around your computer screen. A lot of them are a kind of choose-your-own-adventure story. There's plenty of twists and turns in each of them, and you really get to know the characters and actually see them rather than imagining it inside your head. It really puts a name to the face, and seeing that some... Puts a face to the name you made? And seeing that, or what some of these characters go through in some of these stories, they can be quite emotional. Interesting. Well, maybe I can check one of them out sometime. Yeah, that'd be great. If you need any recommendations, I'd be happy to give you some. I'll let you know in case I have trouble deciding. Sounds like a plan. Yuri and Shiro exchange a bright, warm smile with each other. Uh, but the smile on Yuri's face quickly dissipates as she lets out a sigh. 